Hello everyone, Amy R here with Prairie Paper and Ink. Still doing Halloween cards. Today I thought I would step it up a bit though and actually create my very first shadow box cards, which are really easy to make. I just, I don't do interactive cards near as often as I probably should because they're fun. So to start off, I have all my images stamped onto some Nina cardstock and this, um, Cardstock's Copic Friendly, it's the Nina Classic Crest Solar White 80 pound cardstock and I stamped the images with my favorite things, um, extreme black ink. And all these images are from the MFT Birdie Brown Frightfully Sweet stamp set. And I stamped all of the little characters twice. Just, I thought if I'm going for it, I might as well do two. <laughs> and I stamped the little candy images multiple times. So I have everything stamped everything ready to go and then I just sat down and started coloring everything with my Copic markers. So I've super sped up the coloring process here so that we're not sitting here all day and um, I've listed all the colors I used on the screen. I just go along and do my typical darkest to lightest and I do everything at once. So I went along and did all of the like black areas which I used the cool grays for did all of those on all the characters at once. And now I'm doing um, some really light browns for the bunny and then for the, like the center areas of the fox and this little like squirrel image, as well as the little um, hedgehog that's all wrapped up in bandages there. So I go along, I add all the color, you know, all of my E42 to everything. And then I go in and blend it out with my E41 and then I go and do E40. And then that just makes everything go along a lot quicker, even though these did take a while because I was doing double of everything. And plus I have like all the images of both sets, but go big or go home is kind of usually how it is. And I always have the hardest time, like what images to use from a set? It's like, why not use all of them? <laughs> so I did all that. And then I used E44 and E43 for the darker areas of the little like squirrel and the hedgehog. And then I did E07, like red browns for the fox. And then after I got all of the critters, <clears throat> like the basics kind of colored here and now I'm going to start going in and adding the actual color. So I'm going to use of course typical Halloween colors, you know, purple, orange, green. Starting with my purples, so I used V25, V22 and V20 going along and adding all of that color and deciding to just keep the candy coloring simple and do them all the same rather than like really mix it up because again, a lot of little pieces to color, a lot of little images. So added all my color and then for my oranges, I did YR07, the YR04, and then the Y17 for the actual like orange areas. And for the little candy corn on the bottom of them, it's supposed to be yellow. So I used the Y17 when I get to that, I add that to the bottom and then I just took my Y08 and quickly, you know, pulled the color out, making it really just, again, quick and simple. When you're dealing with really small images, you don't really need to do as much, you know, shading and whatnot. I just, because I already had the markers out, um, I add, the, you know, the three shades of color for the orange, but it's very simple and quick and easy. So I did all that. And then the greens are only for the candies and then a couple like little bow tie here and there just to, you know, bring in more of that color. So I added all my greens. And then I used BV20 for the little bandages on the hedgehogs as well as on the white parts on the candy corn. It just gives that little shading and dimension. Then add some pinks to their little ears, some pink for their little cheeks. And then I just used the C8 to fill in everyone's little noses just to darken them up. And after I'm done all of this Copic coloring, I take my white gel pen and add the highlights. And that's what really makes everything just start to pop. So I just go along, add highlights wherever I think they need to go. I don't really, I get asked that a lot. You know, what rules or guides I follow? I don't. <laughs> I always kind of in my head picture, you know, a light source either coming from the upper right or kind of the center-ish of images. But at the same time, I don't really follow, you know, exactly where the light would be hitting the source to add the highlights. I just add them wherever and just kind of add them and add little dots here and there. It just, you know, makes everything pop. It gives a little bit of texture. It gives it that little extra something. So I just go along and add them and wherever I add them on one image on the next, like the coordinating image, I try to add them in pretty much the same place, but I'm also not super worried about it because that's going to make two separate cards and I just do my thing. So I don't put a whole lot of thought into it. I just kind of go along and it's like, oh, that looks like a good spot to add a highlight, draw a little line. 
So I used the coordinating uh, dynamics dies to die cut all of these. And for the little candy images, I just cut those from the center of that panel. And then I'm just running these through my little sidekick machine when I have to die cut a lot and they're small. I like my side cut, sidekick for this because it's quicker. I can just quickly run it through and do this, you know, all the multiple times it takes to die cut, you know, however many dozen little pieces of candy I had sitting here that were stamped. So this made it a lot faster. I would just tape the dies into place with little bits of washi tape, run them through my sidekick, and then just kept repeating that process until everything is completely die cut. So now that my die cutting's done, I'm going to start building these cards. So I wanted some backgrounds for the insides of my cards. So I have more smooth white cardstock here, and I have my favorite things, um, mini cloud edges stencil. And then I have some Distress Ink in Shaded Lilac. And I have one of my Picket Fence blending brushes that I've been raving about in pretty much, yeah, every video I've posted the last few videos. <laughs> so I had people asking like how these brushes would work with Distress Inks. They work great. I think they'll work great with pretty much any ink you want to use. It doesn't matter, I think, which brand or style or anything. But yeah, works really good. All I'm doing is picking up the ink on the brush and then just using a circular motion to pull it out. You can use, do the exact same thing with the Ranger mini, mini ink blending tool or a little sponge dauber, whatever floats your boat. I've done this so many times, especially with this like cloud, any sort of cloud edge stencil. I just like to start at the top and work my way down and I just keep rotating the stencil so I get a different, you know, line of clouds each time and then add the ink and it's good to go. So I worked my way down. I did that to two pieces of cardstock. And then to clean my brush, I really like using this microfiber cloth. I mentioned this in my last video. It just, it removes any excess ink and then it's good to go. I'll use it with a different color. And I'll sometimes I'll wipe it on a baby wipe just to make sure it's clean. So that was that. Now to make the shadow box card, these are really easy. You take a standard A2 size card. So I had the measurements there on the screen, just four or eight and a half by five and a half, score it four and a quarter. And with this first piece, you want to cut half an inch off the one end. It doesn't matter which end. You just want to cut half an inch off. So you've basically got a standard A2 card with one side half an inch shorter. Now you take a second piece of the exact same size. And this time you score at half an inch, four and a quarter inch, and four and three quarter inches. So you've got all of those scored. And then you want to reinforce all of those. And I'm using my Teflon bone folder here. It just makes things easier. I use this in like anytime I actually show the scoring. This is what I've been using. I've been using this for years now. Totally, totally, totally worth it. So when you reinforce those, you're basically left with this like little rectangular box. And you don't have to do this step, but it does help a little bit. I cut a tiny little bit off the end of the little half inch flap on the end. So you've got... Um, once you've got that done, you need to create a window to actually make this a shadow box. You can use any wafer die you want, circle, square, rectangle, whatever. I'm just using one of the inside and out stitched ovals from MFT. And you die cut that from the, <clears throat> the piece or the part of that panel that is in between the half inch flap and the other flap. So I've got that die cut. And now I want to add my little cloud background into this before I adhere anything. So I just trimmed it down so it's going to fit inside this little like rectangular box. And I'm going to be using Simon's Craft Tacky glue for this. If you want, you can totally use a dry adhesive like score tape. And I'll link to score tape, especially if you're not comfortable with liquid adhesives. This one I really, I've been just loving. And as long as you make sure not to add too much so it's not oozing out anywhere because you could end up gluing everything shut. But I just was too lazy to pull out my score tape and this worked for me. So I've adhered my little cloud background and I want to adhere all my other elements before I actually make this into the shadow box card. I just find it way easier to adhere everything first and then put the card together. So I die cut some darker gray and some black cardstock with the My Favorite Things Birch Trees Dynamics. And I'm going to adhere those on the front of my little shadow box as well as on the other side of the window just to kind of help create my little like spooky scene for all my characters. So I'm just using the craft tacky glue and adding the glue just to the areas where the trees are going to be touching the cardstock. So that inner area, I don't want any adhesive because I don't want to, like I said, glue my card shut. So I'm adding the trees to the outside and then I'm going to add trees to the inside and it doesn't matter how they're lined up or anything because you're not going to see, you can see like once this card is like actually adhered, this backside 
here of the oval window, you're not going to see it. So it doesn't matter how things look or anything. So I'm going to adhere some trees to the back of this for my little window scene. And then once I've got those adhered, I'm going to start adhering all of my little characters that I want to go on the inside of this card as well to really finish off this scene. And I did think about adding like a sentiment, etc. But I end up creating like adding so much to this. <laughs> There's not really anywhere to put a sentiment, but I'm okay with that. And um, it just kind of works. I just wanted the little characters and I'm going to have a sentiment on the outside of the card and that's fine. So I'm going to adhere all my little characters. I tucked the little fox in kind of behind the window and then the rest I'm kind of adhering you know, just around here and there, have the little like bunny bat kind of hopping through or flying through the trees here. And then adding all these little pieces of candy that I had colored and die cut. So once I've got everything adhered, this is where you really would want score tape. But again, I didn't have a problem with the craftaculu. You just add adhesive to that half inch flap. Then you line it up into your card base, I'll call it. Um, the shorter side is on the back. And then you just close the card, just like so. You line it up with the little score or the scored center there, and then you press it shut. So once you've got that adhered, it's starting to come together. And then I just want to open this completely. So I have that short flap there on the right, and I'm just applying adhesive to the back of that little rectangular shadow box. So this is the back piece where that cloud background was adhered. And then I'd add more adhesive to this and then I close my card and make sure there's no adhesive oozing out anywhere. Again, score tape, something like that will work great. And that creates a shadow box. It's the simplest thing. Now that I've actually done it, it's like, why did I put this off for so long? It's, they're so easy. It's one of those things where you do it once. It's like, oh, okay, I get it now. <laughs> so you could leave it kind of like that and just keep your outside, the outside of the card very simple was what I originally intended to do because obviously the real, you know, stunner of the card is the inside. But I had those ovals that I cut from the center on the inside of the card and I had those left over. I had some trees left over and I had all these characters because I had stamped and colored all of them. So what I ended up doing was adhering the trees to that die cut oval, trimmed off the excess. The sentiment, I all I did was die cut another oval from um, some lavender cardstock and then I white heat embossed one of the sentiments from the Frightfully Sweet set. And then to trim this, rather than using my paper trimmer, I just used my ruler and a craft knife, like a pen blade, to trim that down just to make sure it was straight. And then I'm going to just adhere that right over and it kind of lines up with that oval with the stitching edges. And then I'm going to adhere my remaining little characters and candy and whatnot to complete this little mini scene that's going to go on the front of the card. But if I didn't have, if I hadn't stamped and like, you know, colored every single image, I would have kept the outside really, really simple. Like just maybe stamped a sentiment, maybe added a piece of candy, whatever. But because I had it all, why not? So I'm going to adhere that to the front of my card. And again, I did all this twice. I'll show here at the end. I have both cards very similar. I forgot to hit record on my camera, but I was adding um, Nouveau Crystal Drops just as a final little touch, adding tiny little dots to the actual oval um, scene on the front and then adding a few more around that to the outside of the card. And then I'm gonna tap my card while the oval, while the crystal drops are still wet. So tap this and then set this aside to let it dry completely overnight. And I do that to both cards. And then that finishes off these cards. So when you open the card, it opens up into that little shadow box scene. But when the card is closed, it's really, really flat and easy to mail. These are so much fun to make. I'll do more in the future. You know, now that I've finally, you know, popped that bubble and done it, I'll have to do more, but these are really, really fun. So as always, I'll have links below the video to my blog post. I'll have a supply list with links to everything I used. You can check that out below if you're interested. Thank you all so much for watching and subscribing and thumbs upping and commenting on my videos. I really appreciate it. And I will see you all very soon in the next one. Bye.